it's time to look at 5 hacks components I found for this video. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Let's start with the first one. Home Assistant Community Store. Yeah, a lot of updates are here. Integrations. Explore and download. And type Ryan or Ryanair. If you are using Ryanair, this application will not just pull information about your future plans, possible flight cancellations, but also allow you to have a quick boarding pass for your next flight. Let's click on download. Latest version at the time of the recording is version 2023.12 and click download. Since this is a full-blown integration and not front-end component, we will have to restart our Home Assistant, but first let's check at the documentation. Click on three dots, click on repository. One thing I usually do before I install any kind of a new component, I go to the repository and check on issues, because here you may find issues that, for example, the integration is not working with the latest update of Home Assistant, that there are some prerequisites, etc. So always a good idea to check the GitHub repository for any open issues. But let's get back to the integration itself. As it says, you can pull the information about flight number, origin, destination, airport code, check-in, open, close times, arrival, departure times, passenger name, seat number, mobile-friendly boarding pass, which in my opinion is a really awesome thing, number of upcoming flights, flight cancellation status, account information, and upcoming flights count. For this, of course, you already need to have Ryanair account, because it will not work without it. Now that Home Assistant has restarted, let's go to Settings, Integrations, click on Add Integration, and select Ryanair. There is a bit of catch here. If, for example, you are using your social uh, platform account, you will need to add to that account also password, since we need credentials to log in. You cannot log in, for example, with a Google account or a Facebook account. Type in the email that is associated with the Ryanair account, password you use there, and click on Submit. And click Finish. If you go now on the integrations page, you will see information that you have devices, if you, of course, have account, and, of course, if there are any flight details available for your upcoming flights. Click on it. We have information about the account, where it says that I have upcoming three flights, and then each of those flights should have detailed information. If you are flying with somebody, that information will be also available in the attributes page. We have information about flight number, origin, destination, arrival, departure, check-in, open, check-in, close, is cancelled, and, uh, as I said, passengers' names with uh, exact seats. Of course, this information is hidden because I will not be showing you my travel plans. And that data, of course, can then later be used in your automations to get reminders, you can also receive notification if the flight is cancelled, if the check-in is open, etc, etc. And don't forget that if you do end up installing this component, thank the author, Jamie, by clicking star on his GitHub repository. But let's quickly jump into the new integration. This one also requires you to have something besides Home Assistant. I usually do not record videos about stuff like that, but I'm liking this one and I know that some of you are using the scales in the Home Assistant, so there is a pretty nice integration. It has one pitfall or downsize, but we will mention that in a couple of seconds. Let's go to Hex, Integrations, Explore and Download, and type here Body, select Body, Me Scale. If you have a smart Mi scale, you can integrate it inside Home Assistant. Those scales usually use Bluetooth protocol, and since Home Assistant has a year or more now Bluetooth proxy capability or capability to pull in data from the BLE devices into Home Assistant, this is a really nice way to integrate inside Home Assistant. But I mentioned one catch. Currently, this integration out of box will not support multiple users. So only one person or data from one person can be tracked in Home Assistant. If you want to support multiple people, there is a way to do it via the ESP Home, and I've been doing it for some time, but on the other hand, you will be missing out on a lot of details that this integration provides. There is a workaround for Node-RED users, but I'm not the person that will be installing Node-RED for just for that, so let's get cracking with the integration here. Click on Download, Download. The latest version at the time of the recording is version 2024.1.3, and we have to restart our Home Assistant. 
While Home Assistant is restarting, let's check the documentation. The purpose of this integration is to pull additional information Home Assistant. If, for example, you already have MeScale and your system has detected it via the boot proxy, you have only two variables inside of Home Assistant. One is the weight and the other one is resistance or ohms. Combine those two values can give you a lot more information than the Home Assistant allows you to see. As I mentioned, there are other ways to pull information in Home Assistant. One way of doing it was via the ESP Home, but I like this idea here. So let's check this one out. After you add this integration to Home Assistant, and we will do configuration in just a second, based on the data pulled from the scale, it will give you more data. This is the weight, height, years, gender. Of course, years and gender is something that you provide body mass index, basal metabolism, plus a lot of other entities, and those can be used to track the state of your body, based on the weight and, of course, the resistance of the body. If you want to read more about the multi-user or multi-account support, you can go to the issues in the GitHub repository and read thread there. By the way, if you do like this integration, don't forget to thank the author by clicking the star on his repository. Okay, the system has rebooted. On integrations page, if I browse down, we can see that I have Xiaomi BLE. This is the Home Assistant internal integration. And if I click there, I can see that I have two mosquito repellents plus me body composition scale. If I click on it, we can see that it pulls information about ohms or the resistance or impedance, but also pulls the information about mass. But as I said, we can get a lot more information. If you're wondering what this is, this is actually battery notes, and I did previously already record with on them, and I really do recommend for you to use this one if you have any devices powered by batteries. Probably if you are installing Home Assistant, you have tons of them. Let's go back to settings, integrations, click on add integration, type in body, body means scale, and we will now go through the configuration wizard. Type in your name, date of birth, select your gender, and click on submit. Here you have to specify your height in centimeters, select the weight sensor, this is the Mi Body Composition Scale Mass, and also Impedance Sensor, Mi Body Impedance, and click on Submit. Select an area, and click Finish. If we search for Body Mi Scale, open it, we now have one service or one device with a lot of entities. We have information about the basal metabolism, BMI, body fat, body score, bone mass, lean body mass, metabolic age, mm -hmm. muscle mass, protein, fat, water, and weight. When you step on the scale once again, the data will be updated and also all the corresponding sensors will receive update to the information that you see here. But as I said, unfortunately, currently out of box, this integration doesn't allow you to have multiple users. There is a workaround by using Node-RED, but no, I'm not going that route. At some point, you probably wanted to add some media to your Home Assistant. And here I'm not talking about the music, I'm talking about the images. For example, create an album or replace some image with a family image or your apartment image or your house image, etc. Yes, there are ways on how you can do that, but the internal component in Home Assistant only allows you to load images that are publicly available or published on the internet. And this is not something that we want to have. For that, let's go to HACS, Frontend, click on Explore and Download, and type in Media, and we will be installing Media Source Image Card. As it says here, it allows you to show images that are stored in your Media Source and optionally toggle an entity when clicked. For example, click on Image to toggle the light. Click on Download. The latest version at the time of the recording is version 0.2.0, .0. download. And since this is a front-end component, we do not need to reload Home Assistant, instead we need to reload our browser page. But the question is, how do you add media to Home Assistant? That's also very easy. Go to your Media tab, go to My Media, click on Manage, and here you have option to add media. I will be adding just a random media out of my hard drive. And now I have a file called algolaserdelta.png. From the repository, I will copy this code here because it will make it easier for me to add the image to Home Assistant. And while we are already here, don't forget to thank the author, Luis Alberto, by clicking the star if you do like his front-end component. In Home Assistant, click on three dots, edit dashboard, add card, select manual card. And after you have copied the text, 
change the image name. And this is it. Now you have an image that has been pulled from your local instance of Home Assistant. And why is this such a big deal? If we click on three dots, edit dashboard, click on add card and use internal Home Assistant solution, for example, this one here, as you can see the URL it is requesting is an external URL. And that means that your images should also be, yeah, publicly available. By using the media manager and uploading your images locally, you are making sure that your private images do not leave your instance of home assistant or your internal home network. Time to check the next integration. For that, we will go to integrations, explore and type in daily and we will be installing daily sensor. Daily sensor is a pretty neat functionality. It allows you to have a sensor that is pulling values from another sensor and then presenting you with the values for just that day. For example, it can be outside temperature sensor or your bathroom temperature sensor and each night at the midnight it would reset its minimum maximum average values. Nice thing to have. Let's go and click on download. The latest version at the time of the recording is version 0.4.0 click on download and once again we will need to restart our home assistant. And by the way, if you do like this integration, don't forget to give a star to the author to say thanks to him. As it says here, it takes or aggregates an input sensor until midnight. Then it resets. Aggregation is configurable. It can be minimum, maximum, sum, average or mean value, median value, standard deviations and variations. The configuration is also very simple. You need to give it a name. You need to specify the input sensor. You can choose what it will be, minimum, maximum, sum, etc. Interval in minutes in which it will update the sensor. And is it automatically resetting the sensor at midnight or not? Yes, there is option for you to create a script that would reset it at a later time or date. But I like the automatic reset at midnight. After restart, go to integrations. Click on add integration, type in daily, click on daily sensor and we will start with the configuration wizard. Bathroom daily temperature. We will select the sensor name here. There are in my opinion two problems with this integration but that may change in future. First one is that you are not able to select sensors, instead you have to type in the sensor name, which is of course easy since you can copy it from the developer tools, from the state section, but it takes some time. The other one, well, we'll talk about it after I finish configuring the sensor. For me, I will be selecting maximum value, unit of measurement, I will copy it once again from the states page, and the refresh interval. Let me put here 10. I will leave automatically reset at midnight. Click on submit. And I've created a couple of additional sensors. We have daily balcony minimum temperature sensor, then we have daily living room mean temperature sensor and bathroom daily maximum temperature. One note and one warning. It will take up to the time that you specify during the configuration, for example 10 or 30 minutes, for the data to populate inside this integration. But the second issue you all will have is that when you restart your home assistant, unfortunately, this data will be lost. Unfortunately, it is not pulling data from the database, it is doing real-time data analysis, and when you restart your home assistant, it doesn't rely on historical data, instead it will start from scratch. And time for the last integration I prepared for you today. This one is very simple, but I like the simplicity and it also adds data that is missing currently from the UI in Home Assistant. Let's go to Hacks, Frontend, click on Explore and Download, and type in Digital Clock. Yes, this is a very simple frontend component that will allow you to display current time, day and date for your Home Assistant instance. Let's click on Download, Download, the latest version at the time of the recording is version 1.2.4 and we have to reload our browser page. We will copy the example code on the page where we want to edit, click on three dots, edit dashboard, add cards, select manual and replace it with the code that you just added. There are configuration options, for example you can play with the long or short and we now have a simple clock in our home assistant showing us the current time, day, month and the date of the month. 
If you do end up using this integration and if you do like it, don't forget to say thanks to the author by clicking on the star on his GitHub repository. And this is it for this video. I really do hope that you will end up using at least one of the integrations or front-end components that I've showed you today. If you do use, find or maybe have produced a gem for Home Assistant Community Store, don't forget to leave a link down in a comment section below. But also, if the link fails to post on the YouTube, because it may happen, you can find me either on the Discord server, the link to Discord server is down in the video description, or you can find me on the Twitter and post it there. By the way, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on the future videos. And the last thing I want to do is of course say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, subscribed, commented or shared my videos. Thank you. And don't forget to subscribe. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. The last option is of course super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.